Hi, welcome back. So before the break, we were dealing with trigonometry rules and some exam type questions. Let's carry on with that. So this example says, in the diagram, DCB equals alpha, AC equals to H units. They want us to find the size of ACD in terms of theta and alpha. And then there's a few other questions. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's begin with the first question. Finding the size of ACD in terms of theta and alpha. OK, so they want us to find the size of this angle, C1, this little piece here. So because the whole angle is theta here, and the small piece here is alpha, so obviously ACD has to be just theta minus alpha. Uh, you often find that they ask you to name angles like this. So you give you a bigger angle and a smaller angle, both variables, and you have to find one of the other angles. So this technique of realizing that this little angle here is going to be the bigger angle, theta minus alpha. It's quite important. OK. Uh, the second question wants us to prove that AD equals H sine theta minus alpha over cos of alpha. So because we want to find AD, we're going to go to our, our drawing first and examine the drawing first. So let's go see what they ask us first. They want us to find AD. We've got to go look at both triangles and see what information we have. So if you go to the triangles and you look at the triangle, this triangle little at the bottom here, this BCD is a right angle triangle. We've got an angle and nothing else in the triangle. In triangle ADC, this triangle here on top, we notice that we have H. We've also been given, um, or we now have a, 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 an expression for angle ACD, and they want us to calculate AD. So they want us to calculate AD. I have the angle across from it. Okay, I can try and find um, the value of this angle here uh, in terms of uh, alpha and theta. So we try and we're busy. Remember, we're dealing with this triangle here. Okay, and we're finding AD. And we want to try and, because we have an expression for, um, we want to try and find this angle here in terms of our variable. Now, this angle also belongs to the big right angle triangle. And the big right angle triangle, triangle ABC, we've got A, B being 90, and we've got angle C being theta. So we've got three angles. We've got angle A, we've got theta, and we've got 90 degrees, which means a now has to be what? It's got to be the complement of theta. So A, this angle here on top, actually is 90 minus theta using three angles of a triangle because the sum of angles of a triangle. OK, so let's go put it into our sine rule. So we have AD over the sine of the angle across it. And remember, across from AD was C1. And C1, we found, we did, we found C1 to be, or ACD to be, theta minus alpha. OK, and then the other pair, the full pair we're going to be using is this one and that one. So we're going to say h over the sine of the angle across from it. And the angle across from d1, uh, from h, is d1. But we need to find d1 in terms of the angles that we have. And if you notice that D1 is an exterior angle to this triangle here. So it's an exterior angle to this triangle here. So D1, we know that D1 has to equal to that angle plus this angle here. So it's 90 plus alpha. So again, in our sine rule, we're going to say AD over sine of C1 equals H over sine of D1. And D1, we said, was 90 plus alpha. OK, and remember, the 90 plus alpha should already start reminding you of something. Because there's a 90 here, we're probably going to end up using the co, -co rule or the changing to the co-ratio of its complement. OK, so 
remember again, sine of 90, let me just change this color. So remember sine of 90 minus theta, we're going to change it to its co-ratio. So if the co-ratio is cos, so it will become the co-ratio of its complement, so cos of alpha. Okay, and now we're going to find, uh, they want us to find AD, so we're going to make AD the subject of the formula, which means we're going to multiply both sides by sine of theta minus alpha. And we're going to get H sine theta minus alpha equals to cos of alpha. And that's exactly what they asked us to prove. So we've proved that AD is equal to the expression that was asked for. Okay. They ask us to determine the length of AD correct to two decimal places. This is pretty simple because now they give us the actual values. Um, this is just basic substitution. So you're just going to substitute the values in and get an answer with your calculator, 10,59 units. And now we have a value for AD, which is approximately 10,59 units. OK, the last question is? determine the area of ADC. So now we want to find the area of ADC. Remember, we've just found, we found um, AD now, OK? So how are we going to find the area of ADC? We know that AD is 10,59 units, and we know that H is 17 units, because they gave us earlier, right? In the, in the, in the C part of the question, they gave us the value for H. And this one here is 10,59. So if we can use. Um, side angle side like this, we can use area rule using those values. So if you're writing, um, they've given us also that theta is equal to 58 and alpha is equal to 23. So um, uh, angle A, which was 90 minus alpha, must now be, sorry, 90 minus theta must now be 90 minus 58, which is 32 degrees. Okay, so area of ADC will be half, um, uh, half of 17 times 10,59 times sine of 32 degrees. Okay, putting that into our calculator, we're going to end up with area of uh, ADC to be 47,70 units. So this was basically just substituting, this question was just substituting into whatever we found earlier. It should have been pretty simple then. Okay, so we've reached the end of, of this session. We're going for a quick air break. I'll see you just after this. Mm -hmm.